A lot to discuss now with our panel. I'm joined by former Republican Congressman and Executive Director of the Aspen Institute Congressional Program, Charlie Dent, and Democratic strategist and co-founder of Third Way, Matt Bennett. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here this morning. Um, I want to start with uh, 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 the swing states, but where Trump was not. <laughs> he did not go to the swing states. Uh, he went to the state of New Jersey this weekend, talking to a large crowd there, and he made an attack that was a bit more unusual than we've ever seen. Take a listen. They don't want to report that. The mental institution population is down because they're taking people from insane asylums and from mental institutions. You know what the difference is, right? An insane asylum is a mental institution on steroids. Silence of the Lamb. Has anyone ever seen the Silence of the Lamb? The late, great Hannibal Lecter. He's a wonderful man. He oftentimes would have a friend for dinner. Ah, uh, wow. If President Biden, Charlie, said the same thing, what would your fellow Republicans be saying about him this morning? Senile, uh, mentally unfit, <laughs> more reasons why he shouldn't be uh, president of the United States. Uh, it's, uh, I know there's a double standard here. I mean, it's clearly a, a really a crazy comment that Trump just made there. I'm not sure it was coherent in, in any way, shape or form. I happen to be about 10 miles from there uh, on Saturday. so. Uh, I saw the traffic, but he had a huge crowd. But bottom line is, um, you know, Trump just seems to be judged differently than any other politician in, in my memory or my lifetime. So it's really bizarre. You know, we are in such, as you, you mentioned, Mr. Dent, we are in such unchartered territory during this campaign season. season. Uh, Matt, judging from, from polling, though, when you look at the, the latest polling that's come out of, of on the swing states, does Donald Trump need to spend much time in the swing states, judging from what we're seeing? He hasn't been spending a lot of time there because, of course, he's, he's in trial during the week. Um, are we just in a different time now? Well, I certainly hope he doesn't spend time in the swing states. That'd be great for Joe Biden. Uh, look, I think the polling now, it's like trying to predict the weather in November. In an election this close, it just doesn't tell you much when you've got a lot of these things that are either within or very close to the margin of error it's going to be a really close election. And I think the clip you just showed is emblematic of some of the things that Joe Biden has to do. He has to remind voters what they hated about Donald Trump. And one of the things they hated is that he's a chaos agent. He, he just spews out ridiculous random things all the time. Sometimes it's funny and ridiculous, and sometimes it really matters. Like during the COVID crisis, when he was telling people to inject themselves with bleach, so one of the tasks for Biden over the next five months is to remind people of what they really didn't like about the Trump years, because they're kind of looking at Trump through rose colored glasses right now. All right, Matt, let me let me ask you about uh, Biden and his campaign. He's doing the star studded fundraiser we learned in Los Angeles with big name headliners, George Clooney, Julia Roberts, former President Obama. I know it brings in a lot of, of cash usually, but, but can these sort of gatherings backfire with voters who are worried about their grocery bills? Well, look, both sides do these glittery fundraisers. Trump just did one with oil executives and told them that he would cut their taxes and make them even richer uh, and get rid of climate you know, laws that Biden has passed. So uh, you take a risk on either side if you're going to do fundraisers with very wealthy, very high profile people. But, you know, cash is what fuels campaigns. I do think, though, that the cash advantage that Biden has right now in the end, probably won't be decisive, but it does show that the party is beginning to coalesce behind the president. And I think that's very important. Mr. Dent, I want to go to foreign policy now. There is fallout from Biden's announcement to our Aaron Burnett that his administration will withhold bombs uh, from Israel if Israel does a full-scale invasion of Rafah. He's getting flack now from both sides of the aisle, Republicans and some Democrats. A group of 26 Democrats now have sent a letter to Biden saying they're deeply concerned about the message the administration is sending to Hamas and other Iranian-backed terror proxies by withholding uh, these weapons shipments to Israel. I, I want you to listen to what Republican Senator Lindsey Graham said and Democratic Senator uh, Chris Murphy. Why is it okay for America to, not to, to drop two nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to end their existential threat war? Why was it okay for us well, to do that? I, I thought it was okay. To Israel, do Senator whatever you have to do to survive as a Jewish state. When you're being a good leader, you are often um, upsetting people on the right, 
and the left. And so President Biden advertised himself when he ran for office as someone who would often play it down the middle. I'm curious, Charlie, what you thought both of Graham's comments um, and of Senator Murphy's comments there. Well, my immediate reaction is that Joe Biden has put himself in a situation where on the one hand, he supports Israel's right to respond to the horrific attacks uh, by Hamas from October 7th. On the one, that, he supports that. On the other hand, he's trying to restrain Israel's response uh, to protect Gaza civilians. He is pleasing no one. In fact, I think as John Bolton said, the folks, the, the, what I would call the axis of aggressors, those folks in Russia, Tehran, and, and Beijing, are probably delighted with uh, this uh, conundrum that Biden finds himself in. Uh, I, I, get, I get the sense that I think Graham is right that we need to stand by our allies. I don't think finding nuance in this case during wartime is a very easy thing to do, particularly when you're a superpower. Sometimes wars like this force you to choose sides, and Israel is our ally. And I can see why a number of Democrats are upset with what Biden has done. Certainly Republicans are. And, but Biden is really trying to placate his base in this country, which is, which is obviously very split on this, and particularly in the state of Michigan. So I think a lot of domestic politics are entering into Biden's thinking on how to manage this war. Charlie Dent, Matt Bennett, thank you so much. A new hour of CNN News Central starts right now.